Hi, welcome back to another video about the International Baccalaureate's Environmental Systems and Societies course. In today's ESS video, I'm going to take you through the significant ideas or the big ideas of topic two, ecosystems and ecology. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about each of them. I'm just going to summarize the main things that you need to know to be successful in your ESS exam. The first big idea is that every species interacts with the living and non-living environment and that those interactions define that species role in the environment. That role is called its ecological niche. In biology, the term species has several different definitions, but it is basically a group of organisms that are capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offspring. Depending on whether you're looking at genetics or physical characteristics, there are some more precise definitions, but we'll explore those later when we get into the topic 2.1 specifically. The second big idea in ecology and ecosystems is that populations change and respond to the their interactions with the environment. In this simple map of California here, you can see that we've got a bunch of different amphibian or salamander species. At some point, they were a single population and they have been physically isolated over many millions of years. And now, because the environment in this coastal mountain range may be different from the environment of this coastal mountain range and it's separated by a barrier here of the central valley these species have evolved or changed in response to the way that they interact with the unique set of living and non-living factors where they are found the third big idea in ecology and ecosystems is that photosynthesis and respiration play a huge role in the way that energy moves within ecological communities. In ESS, you don't typically need to memorize a lot of formulas, but I would highly recommend that you memorize the chemical reaction for photosynthesis and the chemical reaction for respiration. Luckily, they are the same um, reaction, just forwards and backwards. The next big idea in topic two is this concept of food chains or food webs that we touched on in topic 1.3, energy and equilibria. But in topic two, we're going to look at it in more depth through this big idea of an ecological pyramid because we're talking about the biomass or energy that's available at every trophic level within an ecosystem. Ecosystems are connected or linked by energy and matter. Not only is this topic 2.2, but this actually draws on what we established in the energy and equilibria components in topic 1.3. Right. Energy flows through ecosystems, they enter energy enters ecosystems, flows through it, may be transferred, may be transformed, but ultimately will then exit the ecosystem, whereas matter cycles over and over and over again within ecosystems. As I'm sure will come as little surprise to many of you, the primary source of energy all of the ecosystems on earth is the sun. The sun's energy drives the movement of all energy and all matter in the vast majority of earth's ecosystems. There are some exceptions, which we'll talk about when we get into this subtopic in detail, but for the most part, the sun is our main energy source. In topic two, we're going to go through several different terrestrial biomes, and you can see them spe spelled out here. 
in this Whitaker biome diagram. What you need to know, rather than the specific numbers for every biome, is that biomes are defined by a unique combination of the average annual temperature and the typical amount of precipitation that that area receives. Those are influenced by the planet's orientation to the sun. They're also influenced by seasons, which, are, which result from the tilt of our planet. And they're also influenced by the structure of Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere we'll talk about in more depth in topic six, where you'll actually look at the different zones of Earth's atmosphere. But in topic two, what you really need to remember are temperature and precipitation combine to form the unique combination of characteristics that determine the distribution of biomes around the planet. Succession is a big idea in ESS. You're going to find succession at some way, shape, or form in pretty much every single IB ESS exam every year. And what succession is, is a change in the ecological community of organisms from bare rock, where there's no soil, through varying stages of de development, up until you have a climax community, which is that stable state or dynamic equilibrium that we first encountered in topic 1.3. Biodiversity, we talked about resilience in the previous topic, right? Biodiversity and stability are intrinsically linked. In short, the more diverse an ecosystem is, the more stable it is. The more diverse an ecosystem is, the more resilient it is. We'll get into the reasons for that and actually start to measure some of those components in this topic in more detail a little bit later on. My personal favorite part of the ESS syllabus is topic 2.5, investigating ecosystems. And in this particular topic, what you'll learn about are different methods for going out into the field and measuring the way that living organisms interact with one another and that the way that they interact with the non-living or abiotic components of the ecosystems where they're found. This to me is the fun part of ESS. And this is the foundation of the kind of work that you'll do in your internal assessment. As you learn to investigate ecosystems, one of the things, one of the key skills that you're going to need to take away from this is how you establish the type of reliable, repeatable methodologies in different living environments that previously you've probably only done in a controlled laboratory setting. So we'll look at the way that you set up your data points, the way that you lay them out across the landscape, how you choose where to set them up. All of those are how you're going to quantify or measure ecosystems. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful for introducing the major ideas you're going to encounter in ESS topic to ecosystems and ecology. For more resources about this topic, please visit my website, www.mrcreamerscience.com, where you'll find guided notes and slide decks and associated videos for every subtopic within topic two. Also keep an eye on my channel as I post more videos going through those slide decks and explaining what it is that you need to know and be able to do for topic two. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel because it helps me out. Thanks.